is Georgia Southern University. And one yeah, of Georgia the things- Georgia Southern University also. Oh, uh, there, there's part of, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty gutsy design, you know, I think. Um, this felt good in my hand. Yeah, the weight down here is really fun. And well. And I, I love the, the leather work that's, that's down here. I mean, this, you, the stitching sticks out a little bit, but if you put it the right way around, it feels great. The retention is, is lovely. And the, the casting in here is really cool. It did, however, let go in a bunch of places up here. So this is, I think, a combination of I mean, perhaps ductile or, uh, and steel for the faces, which is, again, ductile is a pretty, pretty durable material, but it just, in this case, it's just this, the uh, dimensional uh, lattice wasn't up, up to snuff, I think. I yeah, think up, yeah. you know, beefier it would have been good. We gave this one the award for most intricate casting, and uh, it just could have used a little more uh, strengthening. Yeah, I think, a little to, beefier to in the lattice. So these sword parts come to us from Cal Poly Pomona CPP. Before this thing broke, that's a good looking sword. I mean, it, it looks a lot like Sting from Lord of the Rings. The shape is just, just right. It's got that nice leaf blade shape. I like that there's some casting elements that are still visible on the blade, and they show that this is the as-cast surface, and it's a really fine finish on your casting, so nice job. The big problem is these sharp corners right here. They're a stress riser, and when you are using a sword like this and smashing into things, stress risers are where things break, and you can see it started here at the stress riser and just came up, and, and the whole handle broke off. The blade itself has good uh, size to it, it's nice and light. The handle itself is a little wide in this dimension and it's, it could use a little more beef in, in this dimension as well, but uh, I just taking this down in width would be uh, really beneficial. In general, I think you did a great job. It's just one small choice ended up breaking your sword in two. These pieces I'm holding uh, came from Arizona State and, and uh, it's, a, it's an entry that had some issues uh, going in. The, the, the castings didn't hold and they added some welding to it and unfortunately those welds gave way. But again, I, I don't look at these things when they, they break like this, I don't look at it as a failure. It's a learning example, it's a learning uh, moment. Um, Design-wise there's some issues with this I might have, but if you can look at the grain structure on the break, you can look at the way the weld failed and what went wrong, and that way, next one is better, next one's better. I mean, we, if you build properly, you fail in an upward trajectory, and that's that's a really great learning method, is, is destructive testing. Georgia Southern team number two, uh, they had a, a really nice looking axe. There was some noticeable porosity in it. The edge was really obtuse, but the big thing that happened is the uh, handle failed. So it, we call it a catastrophic failure. And that was unfortunately what put it out of the, out of the running. Even before we swung this thing, we, we decided that, uh, and prophetically so, decided that we wanted to give this one the award of most likely to explode. And it did. It did. <laughs> You can see what happened to it. Uh, the, at all of the fracture points, we see some uh, center line shrink. There's a darkness here, which shows that there's probably was a crack already here. Uh, this is probably where this whole failure started, um, and then it, it just grew from there. I mean, from what I, from what I know of metallurgy, this is real fine grain. I mean, it, it looks is. like it's strongly made, um, but there are those center line cracks and some shrinkage that. Uh, caused an inherent weakness. But, I mean, while I was still swinging, this was a fun hammer to swing. I mean, this was really cool. It was, it was light, it was fast, it was, it was just a good time. And uh, it's just a shame it blew up. Major issue with this hammer, and that is that the handle broke. Before that happened, it was, it was going along pretty well. I think that the face doesn't show much in the way of any marring from the railroad spike or the, the uh, concrete block. Right. But, uh, but yeah, that's, and, you know, I always hate to see this because you guys didn't make the wood. That being said, it is a really small transition. The, the, uh, the, the hole you have the, for the handle that is small, I mean, you can see. Yeah, this handle is more for like a 12-ounce 12, 12 uh, hammer. And I guess they needed that small transition because they were bringing that handle back far into the tapered area, which then, in my opinion, made this a little difficult to hammer with because the weight was so far forward and it was, it's beautiful, uh, 
amazing, but the balance, that was the balance was a little too far off for that for me. We have Western Michigan University Broncos here, and this has got a pretty good form from about this part up. However, the transition here, and obviously the transition to the handle was not so good. It kind of failed quickly. On this plane, this is a pretty, pretty good representation. One of the things that from here down, longer necks, thinner necks, the transition here is pretty rough. I liked it, it performed well in some regards, but, but broke pretty easily, which is kind of a shame. It's a good looking blade. I, I like the leaf shape you got going on. It's, the grind is a, a little lenticular, and so it retains a lot of weight that it doesn't necessarily need. If you were to do a little bit more of a flat grind uh, on these and, and leave a medial ridge, you'd take a lot of the weight out without sacrificing any of the strength. The edge shows a possible deflection here from, from some of the striking, but the big gorilla in the room, obviously, is that it broke right at the tang intersection. It's a very small tang to have on a sword. You really want a, a big, beefy tang, especially up here at this intersection, and what you have is, is something like a quarter of an inch uh, round rod, and that's just not as strong as it should be. Also, it looks like you uh, kind of relied a little bit on some JB Weld to save you, and uh, that's not what JB Weld does. I mean, it's a strong epoxy, but it's just, it won't take this kind of uh, stress. Had a little bit of issue with this one. The tip snapped off in the wood, and then when I started chopping with it, the, uh, the handle <laughs> snapped as well. Um, you can see it, it snapped right at the joint where the copper pin goes through. So that, that, was, that hole was big enough to make it a, a weak spot on the, the handle. The rest of the blade looks pretty good. There is a crack right here that runs all the way through both sides. So that uh, is an issue probably happened in the quench. The overall shape of the spear is pretty good. I like the, the look of it. I like the, the real thin neck right here, but it did take some damage in the testing. Texas State, Steel Bobcat, kind of bummer. We thought this was gonna be one of the like the last 10 or 12. Some of your decorative features is wonderful. The cross section of the forks is a little bit beefy, but not as much as others. The distance gap between here, one and eighth is probably, I think what has been determined to be optimal. So this was a little narrow and wouldn't function to get behind a lock and pop it off. We didn't really focus on that because we really liked this bar. There's so many much about it, but obviously the real sadness is the failure of the metallurgy. 